Okay, so basically after you install the programs, WinSkip and Putty, you can go up to your programs and find here, a first thing we want to do is go to the Putty uh, menu. And you'll notice there's a lot of stuff. We've got PAgent, PSFTP, Putty, Putty Manual, Putty Website, Putty Gen. For today, for this lesson, all we really need to worry about is PAgent and Putty Gen. And the first thing we need to do is open up Putty Gen. So you'll see it's a blank screen that says no key, basically. So what your goal here is to create a public and private key pair, which it shows you here. Generate a public private key pair. So what we're going to do is generate. All you do is randomly move the mouse around in this blank area like it says. So it's creating some randomness. So there's your key right here. And you can also name it. That's what I usually do. My key from this machine. So that way you can keep track because you may have laptops or other things. Uh, generally, you want to have a key passphrase. The longer the better, obviously, but make sure you can remember it because there is no way to pull out the password because it's also encrypted in there. So we'll just type in some kind of key phrase that you can remember. And of course it asks you if you want to confirm it so you don't have to worry about it. So then what we want to do is save public key. And we'll save that somewhere. You can see I have a couple, but for testing we'll just say my new key. So we'll save that. We also want to save it as a private key. My new private key. Alright, so that's basically done. I want to comment on the parameters. Never use SSH1 unless your host requires you to use it, and I would say they have a security problem. I always use SSH2 RSA. It's the most compatible, although there is one server I use at the university that doesn't like it, but it's still okay to use DSA, but RSA is much better. And just leave the number of bits generated to 1024. That's plenty of security for what we're doing. If you have a lot of highly sensitive stuff, you can go up to 2048, but it's going to take a lot longer to calculate and, and other things. So generally, that's all you need. Okay, so that's it for Putty Gen. We've saved those keys. So the next thing we want to do is go back to our menu. We go to our programs and we go to Putty. This time we want to go to P Agent. And what that does, it doesn't look like it did anything, but you'll notice that there's a little icon down here in my uh, icon bar. So you can open that up and it's going to pull up P Agent Key List. So what P Agent does is it remains in memory. Don't worry, it doesn't take hardly any. You won't even notice a difference. But whenever you try to open up a secure uh, connection either through WinSkip or through Putty and it maybe FileZilla works with it as well. I'm not sure you could try that. But what it'll do is actually uh, log in. So you just have to add the key. You'll find it. We'll call it my new private key. You open it and you see it asks for the passphrase. So I'll type that in and we'll hit OK. And so right here we have the key. And you can see this is my key from this machine. So that's an easy way to remember things as well. So, so that key is now memory resident. You never have to deal with it again. So from the point of P agent, we're done. And as far as putty gen, you've already created your key. So there's nothing more to do. So the next thing we'll do is talk about WinSkip. And I'll do that in another section.